everybody, my name is Brittany with Mainstream Multimedia and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some tips on how to shoot lifestyle product photos on location as well as how exactly to convince brands to pay you to travel to beautiful locations such as this. Now, what exactly is a lifestyle image? It's a type of image that paints the product in a realistic setting. So instead of taking a simple picture on a plain white backdrop, you're giving the product some context and showing consumers exactly what the product is and how to use it. In today's video, we are going to be photographing some images for our client trio and thought this would be the perfect opportunity to take you guys behind the scenes and give you some styling tips for lifestyle images, as well as some camera techniques to produce the best result at the end. And once all of that is done, I will share with you exactly how to get clients to book your traveling services. Before we arrive on location, I love to stop at stores such as TJ Maxx, Marshalls, or Target, basically some place that I know has killer home decor. That's because most Airbnbs are set up with the bare minimum. While the style might be beautiful and they have great furniture, if you're doing close-up shots like we are for a candle, you're gonna wanna have some accent pieces like maybe a plant or a notebook. And having simple touches like that really makes a difference in your images. Once you have all of your props picked out and you're ready to go on location, the very first step is to set up your camera. Make sure you get the angle right before you start messing with lighting or props because if you try to do everything at the same time, you're gonna make an error somewhere along the line. So pick one thing and focus on that one thing before moving on to the next part of the image. Once we have our image set up, I like to see the surrounding. I put the product where I want it and get a really good idea of how things are placed around it. For example, in this first image that we did, I noticed there was a big coffee pot in the back of the image. While this is a kitchen and a coffee pot fits a kitchen theme, it didn't really do anything to accentuate or highlight the candle vessel. So instead, I opted for a brown cutting board, which warmed the image, made it feel more homey without distracting from the candle itself. Something else to be mindful of is anything behind the product. Even though we blurred the background in the final image here, I still didn't want to have, for instance, a soap dispenser right behind the candle. I like to make sure that the product has a blank slate background, but there's still props in the image. This also means being mindful of plugs or open wires that could be kind of in the corner of your images. You don't want anything distracting and you want everything to seem intentional yet effortlessly styled. Now, when it comes to moving things around in your scene, don't be afraid to move big pieces of furniture. If there's a couch that you wanna move somewhere or a table that would look better on another wall, just be careful because it's not your furniture. But this is a great way to play with the space that you have and not feel restricted. So for example, we took this shelf that's right behind me and moved it to a completely different wall to get a nice collection photo of all the candles. The wall that this was originally against was a little dark, there was no windows, and it just wasn't a flattering spot. So we simply moved it somewhere else and it completely changed the image. Hello everyone and welcome to our brief intermission. This is your friendly reminder to breathe, make money, and drink whiskey. Cheers. Cut! While you may have the freedom to move furniture and decor around, lighting is a whole nother ball game. There's only so much that you can do with the light that is given to you in the space that you're renting, whether it's indoor or outdoor. So for this, I like to bring three different sources of light with me. Our studio light, a portable RGB light, and a light reflector. That way we can bounce light wherever we see fit. Even if you're shooting in the middle of the day, you can still end up with an underexposed room. And what that means is your product is gonna be simply too dark. There's not enough light in the space to produce a good image. The problem with that is to make an image 
bright, that's too dark, you have to bump up your ISO, which is gonna result in a very grainy image. To get the cleanest and sharpest image, you need to be producing as much light yourself that you can and not relying on your camera to compensate for the light. For example, I'm gonna show you what happens when we turn off this one light that we have in the room. <laughs> and light off. Do you see the difference that makes? By having one studio light, we produced, go ahead, this much light. Now, the way that we do this without the light seeming so harsh is by actually facing the light up against the ceiling. There's no softbox or anything on it. It's the light simply bouncing off the white ceiling to create this beautiful light glow throughout the room. In the studio, we always have our lights facing the product, but because we're doing a lifestyle shoot, it's supposed to be an organic space, you want the natural light to control your scene, and you don't want your studio light to conflict with the natural light that you're trying to showcase. So bouncing it off the ceiling is the best way to make it look as natural and organic as possible. Continuing off the topic of light, one issue you might find yourself running into is how to expose for the exterior and the interior on a home. I used to do real estate photography and when you're photographing a home, some homes are really dark. And if you don't realize they're dark, as soon as you pull out the camera, you'll realize how dark it is. And if you expose for the inside of the home, when you show a window, the windows are gonna be white and blown out. For example, here's a picture where the inside is overexposed. Here's a picture where the inside is underexposed. And here's a picture where the inside is perfect. We take three pictures for every single interior photo that we do. And then blend all three of these together to create a seamless picture where the inside and outside is exposed perfectly. Now your camera actually has the ability to do this by itself. You can set it up click a button and it'll automatically snap three pictures at three different exposures to account for all levels of light. I will link a video below that goes into that and shows you exactly how to set that feature up on your camera. Because we're shooting on location, if you mess up and you didn't realize that something wasn't exposed properly, you can't go back and reshoot it unless if it was in your own studio. So to save yourself, take the three pictures at three different exposure levels and then if you decide not to blend them, then that's okay. At least you have options to choose from. So I've given you some tips and tricks on how to perfect your location shoots. And the ultimate question is, how do you get clients to pay you to travel and make content for them? The simple answer is, tell them that this is a service that you offer. How can they know to book you for something if you don't advertise that you do it? So when someone approaches you asking how much your product pictures cost, Instead of just saying, oh, our product pictures start at this much. Say instead, our e-commerce images start here, our product images start here, and our lifestyle location shoots start at this price. This opens the door for them to be like, oh, I can do that? Wow, that's a great idea. And the best way to convince them to actually book the service, instead of just saying it's something you offer, is to present to them some examples of your work. The best way to do that is with our media kit. This is an easy to read five page layout that allows you to put your past work and just a little bit about your brand and what you can do to help their brand succeed. This way you're not having to explain yourself, you're simply showing them this is what we can do for you. And that is exactly how we landed this job now. Our client came to us with some interest and we proposed this Airbnb idea and they accepted it. We showed them our previous work and now here we are. I know if you're just now getting into lifestyle shoots, you probably don't have a portfolio to show for the work that you do. So we always recommend that you do a couple passion projects. Pick some products that you have or go buy some products that you like from the store and style them around your home, around someone else's home or in simply a location that you like. There are some really nice stores that have nice setups, <laughs> Ikea, and I'm sure you can sneak some products in there and get really creative when styling those scenes. That was such a cool idea at the top of my head. We should do that Ikea trick actually. 
And that concludes today's video. If you found any value at all, please give it a giant thumbs up and consider subscribing. We love sharing behind the scenes tips and tricks and overall just ways to make you more money. Let us know what kind of content you like to see next and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bloopers. <laughs>